15 years. Going into 2019, that's how long it's been since Virginia has won a game against in-state rival Virginia Tech. 15 years since the Commonwealth Cup has made its way to Charlottesville and 15 years of gloating from the men in Blacksburg. How did we get here? How has Tech's dominance in this rivalry sustained? Well, we'll take a look back at the history of this now lopsided battle, one well over 100 years old, and discuss its importance on this edition of Stadium Rivals. The first time this in-state game took place was in 1895 between Virginia and what was then Virginia Polytech Institute. That game ended with a 38 to nothing drubbing by the Cavaliers, the start of an eight game win streak. Although the losses mounted against their rivals, VPI was actually undefeated against every team other than Virginia in 1899, 1901, and 1903. Hunter Carpenter hated Virginia. The halfback starred at VPI from 1899 to 1903, but left for North Carolina in 1904. His only reason for transfer? To beat the Cavaliers. In his one year at UNC, he again failed to top Virginia. After enduring all those losses to the Cavaliers, he became a man obsessed. Carpenter returned to VPI in 1905, his eighth year in college football. Because of that, Virginia accused him of being a professional. After signing an affidavit claiming he wasn't being paid, Carpenter helped VPI to an 11 to nothing lead. After throwing the ball at a Virginia player, Carpenter was actually ejected from the game. He watched from the sidelines as neither team was able to score again, earning VPI's first win over Virginia in its ninth try. Because of the situation with Carpenter, Virginia refused to play VPI again until an agreement was reached in 1923. We jump ahead to the more modern era as both teams battled back and forth from 1923 on. Bruce Arians, now a coach in the National Football League, was once a wishbone QB for Virginia Tech. Trailing by a TD in 1974, Arians hit Ricky Scales for an 11-yard touchdown with no time left on the clock. There were no overtime rules back then, so Tech head coach Jimmy Sharp went for a two-point conversion. The triple option call had Arians rush to the goal line. Did he score or was he stopped short? To this day, Arian swears he was in the end zone by the length of a football. The officials, however, ruled otherwise. Virginia came away with a 28-27 win. In 1982, Ted Turner paid both Virginia and Virginia Tech $850,000 to move the game from a Saturday to Thanksgiving night, giving WTBS, Turner Superstation, and both teams the national stage for the first time ever. It was a cold night with fewer than 24,000 fans in the stadium. Six turnovers by Virginia and Otis Copeland's 126 yards rushing helped Tech win the game 21 to 14. Frank Beamer replaced Bill Dooley as head coach at Virginia Tech in 1986. In his 29 years in Blacksburg, he went 20 and nine against Virginia. But heading into 1990, he had yet to win a game against the Cavaliers. Virginia eventually reached number one in the polls after a 7-0 start. But losses to Georgia Tech and Maryland provided the perfect opportunity for Tech, who crushed Virginia 38-13 as the fans tore down the goalpost. Since 1990, Virginia has gone just 6-22 against Tech. Virginia was attempting to engineer a comeback against Tech in 1995. With five seconds left, Antonio Banks picked off Mike Groh and attempted to run it back for a touchdown. UVA trainer Joe Geick appeared to stick out his leg to trip Banks, but he failed. Banks ran it back for a TD to seal the game, but the trip attempt became one of the bigger moments in this rivalry. Created by both schools in 1996, the Commonwealth Cup goes to the winner of Virginia versus Virginia Tech. Standing four feet high and weighing more than 100 pounds, the Marble and Cherrywood Trophy is engraved with every score in this battle. It remains in possession of the winner, and as of 2018, it hasn't left Blacksburg since 2003. One of Virginia's few wins in the modern era came in 1998. Trailing 29-7 at halftime, senior QB Aaron Brooks and his 345 passing yards helped engineer a big comeback and give the Cavs a 36-32 win. Virginia would attend the Peach Bowl that year, while Tech went to the Music City Bowl. In 2003, Virginia beat Va Tech before their drought began. QB Matt Shaw threw for 358 yards in the 35-21 victory. 
This was the last non-conference game between the teams as Virginia Tech joined the ACC the following year. Tech was going for eight wins in a row over Virginia as well as 19 consecutive bowl appearances ahead of their 2012 matchup against UVA. With four seconds left, kicker Cody Jernell nailed a 29-yard field goal to give Tech the 17-14 win to keep both streaks alive. Tech has dominated Virginia of late. They lead the all-time series 58-37-5, heading into 2019. Bad blood comes from both sides of this rivalry, but the Cavaliers are hoping to fight back. We'll see if they do this year, but this is one of the more important rivalries in the ACC, perfect for our feature on Stadium Rivals.